Oh, lovely green, lovely morning for golf. It would be great. If it wasn't down at the bottom of a cliff, who in the world could even hit that? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here in Cato, New York on the seventh hole of their golf course with OHS alumni uh, year 2009, I believe, Chris Sova. Here is the situation we're dealing with with Mr. Sova at Cato Golf Course. He's located some distance X and he's been elevated to some position Y. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is the fact that we can see him swing the golf club but the sound takes a certain amount of time to get there. Now I've got the editing software that lets me edit the video and of course there's a time stamp on it. And When I do that I find that the time it took for sound to travel was 0.753 seconds. And you could do it yourself with a stopwatch if you could uh, turn the volume up enough so you could hear it. We know that the speed of sound is a constant at that temperature and it's about 344 meters per second. We want to find the distance that the sound traveled. What distance did the sound travel in that period of time? Go ahead, give it a try. Now when I did the math, I said that if velocity, average velocity, is distance over time, then distance must be equal to uh, average velocity times time. When I do that, I come up with a distance of 259 point three meters. Is that what you got? Good. Now we're also told two things are true. We're told by the owner of the golf course that this is about 90 feet. I've already done the conversion and I've turned that into 27 meters. Now, when the golf course is surveyed, they find the distance from the tee to the hole, but uh, I really suspect they're going with this distance. Because there's a lot of variables with hills and stuff. I don't think they're measuring along the path, especially in this course, because there's a cliff there. It would have been tough to measure that. I think they're doing this. And it says it's about 282 yards, which I've converted to 257 meters. So let's check. Let's go back and confirm what this distance is. Except now let's uh, use Pythagorean. We know Pythagorean says that if this is the hypotenuse, then the hypotenuse squared is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared. So the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Plug that into your calculators and see what you get. <laughs> 